Good morning and welcome to Corporal Land's, uh, listening to Corporal Land's business pitch. Uh, special welcome to all of you high net worth individuals uh, uh, to this pitch. We're looking to raise 1.5 million and I'm going to request you to open your hearts and checkbooks at the, by the end of this presentation. So a quick couple of questions. How many of you in the audience uh, are a homeowner? Fantastic. And how many of you homeowners really, really love your insurance company? <laughs> oh my God, what a shocker. Why well, guys, you're not, you're not unique. Uh, the reality is not most, more people either don't care or uh, have had a negative experience with their insurance company. So with the help of this model, what we're able to do, we're able to pre-configure devices. So think of it as, you know, back to that user adoption situation, it's not just a financial incentive that you need to provide to the homeowner to use the device. We also want to make it technically very, very easy, very seamless. So in our case, what we do is when we send the uh, packet back to the homeowner, the sensors and the gateway are already pre-configured. So all you need to do is use a cable, an ethernet cable to connect the uh, gateway to the router and lo and before the sensors are already pre-configured and all you need to do then is to place them. As opposed to the situation today where you need to scan them, configure them. So there's a little bit of a tech savviness that is expected from the homeowner, which a lot of the millennials could do, but you know, some of us in the Gen Xers or the baby boomers, you know, we can, we can, we would like to take, make it even more easier for us. Uh, I just had a quick question for clarification. You have the monthly subscription, uh, which is why a freebie user. Um, is that monthly subscription paid by the user or is that paid no. by the insurance company? Insurance company. Okay. We're only selling, we're only collecting Maybe. revenue okay. from the insurance company. Okay. And, and will that monthly subscription be based on how many customers they have or per customer? It's per customer because it's based on the property that they're covering. So if you're in a single family home and you need, let's say, four sensors uh, going into the sump pump, water heater, kitchen water pipe, and washing line, that's four sensors. So roughly that's going to be about $8 to $12 uh, uh, a month. Uh, my name is Dr. Kalawale. I am the co-founder and CEO at CitySpoon. And at CitySpoon, we help you get your dining decision in front of so you can stop searching and start eating. And we help restaurants target guests in close proximity with a meaningful local ad experience so that they can help drive more customers into the business. So, quick question here. Show of hands, how many love food? <laughs> awesome. I love food too. And I'm glad that all agree on that. Now raise your hands and keep them raised if you've ever said this to yourself, where do I eat tonight? And do you know why we're saying this to ourselves all the time, whether it's a Friday night or 1130 looking for a lunch spot? It's because there's super villains terrorizing our society when it comes to dining. These super villains have taken away 132 hours a year, a year from couples trying to decide what to eat. They've attacked 69% of Americans who say they want to try something new, but 61% of us not know where to go. Basically, we know we want a new taste, we don't know where to go for it, and we're wasting a ton of time in the process. Well, it's time to squash the super villains. Because let's face it, when it's Friday night, you can't afford to spend 45 minutes or more searching for the right place. Because all you want to know is, is it close? Will I like it? And can I get a table now? And for all the men in the room, you don't want to get your wife angry. It's not a good idea. And if your restaurateur has to use traditional methods to engage with your customers, your competitors are going to take every single one of them because they're better able to connect and have meaningful interactions with them, and you're not. So what's the solution? Meet City Spoon. The dining app that gets you closer to a decision prompt and helps restaurants target guests in close proximity with a meaningful local ad experience. How do we do this, you may ask? Our superpower is taking an approach to the Waze app and bringing it to dining. If you've ever used the Waze app before, you know it gets the fastest route to your destination possible by matching your driving patterns with traffic conditions. We're doing the same thing for dining. We're learning your taste buds, matching the wait times of restaurants to get good food into your mouth now. We're just not saving the day for you by giving you smart dining suggestions based on your taste. We're saving the day for you by saving the day for restaurants by generating valuable data which allow them to have meaningful interactions with you. As far as your patent, um, we, read that, we read about that in your business uh, plan. Uh, what is the patent on and uh, you know, how far are you into getting that approved? Sure, so we filed a provisional patent on the method in which we're solving the problem. So that's just how the app solves the wait time part of it. 
There's a second part of um, pattern that we are about to follow, which is more on the IoT versions of Beacon app, using computer vision and other things that we can use to report uh, actionable data back to the restaurant owner in real time. That is in the process because we're still doing customer discovery to understand other things that restaurant operators operate will want to know in real time before it's too late. For example, uh, I, I disclose this here that um, if we could look at your facial expression um, when you get into the restaurant, and if your meal is not arriving on time, we could quickly use computer vision to tell that we need to get that food out to you right away because you may walk out and go say something and yell that eventually impacts that restaurant. So can we use computer vision to actually, in real time, begin to measure facial report back to, that's one, just, that's one nugget of what we're looking at. My name is Teresa Pushkar. I am the founder of Entertainment Productions. My company is Dragon Soup Theater Training and Productions. And I'm very excited about it. So basically what it is, it's integrating theater training, music, dance, speaking skills, etc., with emotional intelligence. So I'm teaching these kids about how to love themselves, how to be non-competitive, how to deal with the stressors in the world and life skills. The challenge is that schools focus on academics, rightfully so, but they are lacking sometimes in their resources. They can only have so many social workers, etc. They do have EI, which is emotional intelligence. You also see EQ training among the grade schools. The feedback I get from those kids, this push card this is so boring. So I edutain, I incorporate education with entertaining these kids. And statistics show the boredom thing too. So let's talk about what we've got. We've got children that are in the dark. They feel really lost. And Dragon Soup brings light to their experience. But it does not bring the light from the outside. It brings the light that is within them. They get to see their strength. They get to fall in love with themselves. And they develop life skills that are practical and can be utilized to make them more effective and efficient individuals as they grow. So my solution, I've got summer camps, I've got two pilot programs. One of them is I am my own superhero for five to eight year olds. And again, that's recontextualized because right now they're so excited about the superheroes. But the superheroes are violent. And so we're bringing in, let's bring peace and kindness and love. We're teaching what's behind the bully, not that just you shouldn't, but what goes on and how that bully is broken. From there, I'm also doing early dismissal. I'm talking to some of the principals, early dismissals about having camps and courses and performances for kids of school age. The big one though, the big, and this has just come more recently, I'm really excited about is superheroes and power princesses. This is at the preschools. There is very little cost associated with this. They have the venue. I can go in there and I can have other teachers go in there and work with these kids. And so we need basic costumes, um, some tools, but this is very, very huge as far as the opportunity for a uh, higher income. Do you have any schools that are uh, considering paying for these programs? Yes. Children, Village Children's Academy has already said they're going to take me into two schools in the fall. So looking very basic at the start, I'm kind of excited because it's $1,200 a week for five hours of work that is guaranteed. And she's been in the industry 20 to 30 years. She approached me, it's quite moving. Um, she and Jessica approached me. I said, hey, she's got overflow of 60 kids for the summer. And I said, can we do a partnership where I can get them in my camp? And she said, well, we can't necessarily do that, but let's have a meeting. And we had a meeting. And she has seen my one woman show and my creativity. So Teresa, I want it to be that you make at least a minimum $5,000 in the morning. Very easy, a couple mornings a week so you can focus on this other stuff. Because she believes. And she's in the industry, knows a huge amount of people in the industry, and as a sudden she's willing to go out there and introduce and support that. So I'm feeling very confident. Plus I'm planning on doing cupcakes and cakes. So it's basically going out and doing lunch and learns. So I can engage with the children, the parents can come and see it, the, the directors of the schools. But the big thing is the directors are really promoting this. They're doing a lot of the work for me. Once they see what I can do, and I've been watching the programs, and they're wonderful, but they ain't this program. Because often they're bouncing balls and moving, but this is so much more. So, I haven't looked at this piece of paper yet, but here is the winner for the 2019 business plan and pitch competition. It is City Spoon. Yep. Congratulations.